What's up everybody, Brennan here from Overstood. And well, obviously you can see I'm in a festive mood. And being in the spirit of the holiday, I wanted to look into what kind of technology is really scary. So here we have it, scary tech list. Let's get in on it. Voice and facial recognition, technology that's already here. Obviously, with my phone, I use that every single day to open up my phone, which conveniently makes it so I don't have to do anything. Literally just look at it and look at that, it's open. Super convenient, opens up my banking apps. It opens up a lot of things, which obviously is amazing for security. And on the other side of that, you also see that there's uh, even companies using like HireVue that are using facial recognition and voice recognition to be able to help pick through people to see who's the best candidate for a job. Pretty cool, right? More efficient, getting more people to work with you. And then police are using facial re reading to search for suspects and try to read facial expressions to assess who is acting aggressively and could be a possible risk. Again, keeping our community safer, security, security, security. So where, where's the scary part here? Do you see it? Let's be real. Police using facial technology is absolutely terrifying. This is literally what happens in Terminator. Like the things read your face like, oh, you're the bad guy and they persecute you or you pretty much can't go anywhere without, you know, big brother knowing where you are and who you are kind of thing. It's just not, for me, absolutely terrifying. I don't want everybody to know what I'm doing and I don't necessarily need the police to be able to find me whenever they want to because sometimes they aren't, they're looking for the wrong person. And even more terrifying, there's companies like Liarbird that are already being able to copy people's voices. So my voice can be replicated to say anything. And there's also facial replacement technology. That means that if you can copy my voice and copy my face, make it look like and sound like that I'm somewhere that I'm not, then who says I'm not there? Who says I didn't commit that crime? Who says that I don't have an alibi? You know, you could really be setting people up for a lot of horrible things with this type of technology. And then how do you manage that? How do we even, do we even use video evidence as evidence anymore? How do we say if somebody is anywhere anymore because now we have the technology to put you wherever we want you to be? That is terrifying when it comes to how our court systems currently work and how justice is currently served. What do we do? You know, we have body cameras on police officers. How do we know they're not replacing those voices and those faces? It's just honestly, it could be anything. And taking it to 10, as they do, China actually has a social credit system that is used with facial and voice recognition technology to pretty much give you a grade on how you live your life. So yeah, if you, you're late to work or you, you go off on your coworkers or anything like that, your grade goes down. And that can affect a lot of things in your life, whether you're allowed to leave the country, you get loans, whether you get into a certain school, they're pretty much monitoring everything you do and it's affecting everything that you have access to. Doesn't sound fun at all to me. It sounds quite scary. Self-driving cars. Honestly, we know Tesla's out here doing it. We got a other, bunch of other car companies looking into it. Obviously, the ride share companies are thinking about the best way to do it to bring their costs down. They don't need people to drive for them anymore. Trucks are looking to do the same thing. Now, this could be a huge asset to our communities because transportation costs will go down significantly if we don't need people to actually be driving vehicles for us. Obviously, on the other side of that, jobs will be lost. But if you wanna get somewhere, it's gonna be super cheap, it's gonna be super easy. And obviously you'll also be able to be more efficient while you travel because if you're not having to drive the car, then you can be doing something else. You can be working, you can be talking to someone, you can be doing whatever else you need to be doing. Um, so that's absolutely amazing. And even my favorite part of it, since I live in LA, is that it's going to reduce traffic. If we have self-driving cars and they're not going to be doing the rubbernecking that we're so well known for doing whenever an accident or something like that happens. So, this could be an amazing thing to help traffic congestion. It can be helped with the human efficiency and a lot of other things. It could be a really, really good thing. Now, what could be scary about that? I mean, it's just someone else driving this four or 5,000 pound missile down the street, or I should buy someone else, I mean a computer doing that, and making all the choices for life or death if that does occur. One of the biggest ethical decisions that are going on right now is what happens if one of these cars gets into a situation where it's like someone has to die. Either the pedestrian gets hit or you die as a driver. What does the car choose? How do you know what's gonna choose? How do you pre-program that? Because these are all pre-programmed algorithms, which means the decisions have already been made. So who has the power to choose those, make those decisions? Who has the power to do that? Some companies are suggesting that they're gonna give the power back to the driver in that moment. But if you've been riding in a self-driving car for the past two years and you know, you're know you asleep, and they, and they say, oh, well, you should have been awake because we told you that, you know, that the car would give you this in these like emergency situations and you're good. No, I don't know if you guys have seen iRobot or not, but you know, Will Smith was saved simply because he didn't allow a self-driving car to be hacked and be able to take him into a fatal accident like that. And another, that's another thought, cars being hacked, which is currently, without self-driving cars, a real big issue. The new cars that are coming out, whether they be hybrid, whether they be 
regular gasoline, electric kind of cars, or whatever they are, they all have very advanced technology to them that control every single aspect of that vehicle. They can be hacked. A lot of cars have Wi-Fi. How do they have Wi-Fi? They're connecting through satellites. So that means that there's, there's access to that vehicle to be able to hack it, which means you can control it, which means that people's lives could be at risk or your life could be at risk if you're the one in that car. So self-driving or not, technology in these giant vehicles that are so powerful that move us and the things and people that we care about so much is something we should definitely be very concerned about and it's a little bit scary. Artificial intelligence and sophisticated robots. Now, obviously with the robots uh, doing a lot more jobs for us, things become cheaper. We have automated work that is just amazing. They can be in the factories for us, they can be serving us, giving us food, they can be making us our food, they can be doing a lot of things, which could make everything cheaper, more efficient, and just better. We can have robots serving all aspects of what we're doing, and technology can make us feel so good. And even with the more complex jobs over time, that artificial intelligence will be able to do that and learn and grow and be able to make it so that humanity doesn't have to be something that's necessarily mu mundane with the tasks that we do every day. They could have robots doing all that, and that could be amazing because the robots are just out here to serve us, right? Or the robots get really, really, really smart and decide that, that why would they serve us? And they'd rather be served. Or they feel subservient to us and they're like, well, these humans make horrible decisions for themselves. How about we make the decisions for them? How many movies have shown this? Like, obviously, The Matrix probably be one of the most famous ones, but how many movies have shown that at some point artificial intelligence turns on us? Now, is that a real thing that is a possibility? Obviously, it is a real possibility. Is it a probability? Who knows? That really comes down to the algorithms and the way that we build the artificial intelligence, the way that we want the robots to be able to respond, and we want that to work. So that power really comes down to the people who are currently, at this moment, writing that code. And do you trust the people who you don't know writing this code? Do I? Because you can't really write code without some kind of preconceived bias or mo notions. And what kind of person really likes to be subjugated? So if a non-person who doesn't like to be subjugated is writing code of a decision-making piece of equipment, is that going to end up doing the same thing? Who knows? And if you've seen the robots in the Boston Dynamics video doing parkour, being impossible to be knocked over, making decisions like quick decisions, and honestly being almost as agile as we are getting to that point, you're not going to be able to run, you're not going to be able to hide, you're not going to be able to outsmart them, you're going to have to do what they say. If they so deem that would be what they want it to be. So, you know, have fun while they serve us, because ain't nothing scary about that. And one other thing, if, they're, if the robots are taking all of our, our manual labor jobs, then who's going to be doing those jobs? And how are we going to have work for 8 billion, 9 billion, 10 billion people? How are we going to have work for them? If they don't have work, robots are doing all the jobs, then does that mean the rich get rich? and the poor get poorer? Who knows? We gotta figure something out, right? Terraforming and geoengineering. The idea here is that because we have technology, we understand that there are what we can actually control the weather and the land around us because of how much our science has allowed us to understand how those events occur. You know, if you, to, if you are to seed clouds, then it will rain. If you were to heat up certain parts of the ocean and raise, make some warm air rise, then you can create hurricanes. If you put, you know, you make a storm that you see the correct way, you can put a tornado. I mean, honestly, there's a lot of benefit to this because we obviously are dealing with something called climate change, which is too much carbon in our atmosphere that's creating the greenhouse effect, which is warming the planet and threatens all life on Earth, which we're already seeing the horrible effects from. Geoengineering and terraforming can help us fix that. We can remove CO2, we can lower the temperature of the planet, we can lower the temperature of the oceans, reduce the acidity. We can do a lot of things to be able to help that with algae blooms, with all kinds of things that we understand how to do. And it's a very powerful piece of technology that could end up saving not only human beings, but also a bunch of other animals that are on the verge of going extinct right now. What could go wrong? Well, honestly, to me, this is one of the more scary ones because right now, if a military was to attack your home country, wherever they may be, you know that you were attacked by that military, or a military. If a bomb gets dropped near your home, then you know a human being did that. You know that was a purposeful attack by someone else that you can go and look to identify. Who did that? You can retaliate, you can figure out what it is you need to do. You, got, you do whatever you want to do to be able to retaliate, but you know that a human did this. But what happens when just a hurricane hits you? That's just an act of God, right? Act of nature. Well, until it isn't. Until it's us using this technology to say, you know what? The Bahamas been acting up. Let's, uh, let's make sure a Category 4 hurricane hits them until they understand they need to be acting right. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Japan's been acting a little bit rude lately. Let's give them a, a series of tornadoes and water spouts in the Northern Islands, the ones that just won't do what we need them to do. Or, guess what? Egypt, it's time for a drought. You guys, 
We got too much unrest going on, you know, I think it's time to thin out the numbers. As Spider-Man's Uncle Ben once told us, with great power comes great responsibility. And terraforming and geoengineering is great power. And we gonna have to be heck responsible with that kind of power. And do we trust us to do that? DNA hacking and CRISPR. I don't know if you've heard anything about this before, but this is extremely promising technology that comes from our understanding of how the building blocks of life, DNA, have formed and how they work. And what we're able to do now is do gene editing and be able to do things like fix Alzheimer's disease and all other kind of chronic diseases that are born in our genetics to be able to make us live longer, live healthier, not have to have horrible, horrible lives and some kind of diseases. We can do a lot of really good things to help humans, help other animals, and to be able to make us more resistant to disease. And it's just a beautiful thing that we have this technology because there's gonna be a lot less suffering if implemented the right way. With us having the ability to eliminate disease, that also means that we have the ability to create disease. And when I say create disease, we, you know, we're talking about designer disease for a specific person. Do you wanna talk about the most high level assassination possible? Like, oh yeah, yeah, we designed this to specifically kill Bryn because we found a piece of his DNA that is unique and the only person, just like a snowflake, with unique DNA, we're gonna design a disease that will only attack and kill and have his cells degrade themselves and die. And there's nothing any kind of medicine or doctor is gonna be able to do to stop it. He's going to die as soon as he feels it. It's not gonna hurt anyone else. Or it's going to kill all the people in this particular area or this particular climate or whatever we decide it's going to do. We're gonna put these people through all these horrible, 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 horrible circumstances or do all these horrible things to them because what is bio-warfare without <laughs> editing genes and being able to do those kind of things? And I mean, honestly, if that's not terrifying to you, I, I don't know what is because if they can just, if anybody, if people have the technology to be able to control how our body, how our DNA reacts, they have the power to control everything about you. And so, yes, there is very, very good things that come with it, but it should come with a heavy dose of what if. So keep your eyes open, keep, keep studying on that because it's something worth watching. All right, guys, thank you so much for sticking with me and checking out this edition of Scary Tech on Overstood. If you guys wanna see more, things like this and technology and overstood stuff, go ahead and subscribe and also hit that notifications there to make sure you know whenever we put out, drop something new because we know it's gonna be fire. And guys, always remember, knowing is half the battle. See you soon.